I got into baseball when I was a kid. You know, my dad put a whiffle ball and ball in front of me and uh, just went with that. And, you know, my parents always told me if they had to, you know, force me to go onto the field, force me to put my uniform on, they didn't want me to do it. So uh, I just always, you know, enjoyed being on the field, playing, competing. I like to compete. You know, it's uh, their best versus our best. And uh, you know, I like when we win. Every at bat is a competition between you and the pitcher. It's your best swing versus their best pitch. And for competitors like Mike, that's what it's all about. For hitters, hitting a home run most often requires our best swing. It's the perfect moment where you get your bat behind the ball with high bat speed and make contact at the right time and right place. MVP Mike Trout had 36 of those best swing home run moments during the 2014 season. Want to be able to one day go deep like Trout? Let's dig in to find out how you can build your best swing and hit the ball deep. Yeah, I'm just telling myself, you know, just keep it simple. Hit the ball hard, you know, low line drives. We try to hit home runs, that's when you get in trouble. If you start thinking about home runs, you, uh, you lose all your mechanics and, uh, you know, you lose your front side. You know, when I'm going good and, uh, you know, just feeling where the barrel's going to the baseball, you know, it's, it's always big. Mike's words are gold here. You can't step into the box trying to hit home runs. Instead of swinging out of his shoes, Mike's first focus is to hit the ball hard on a line. Step number one in building a swing that can hit the ball deep like trout is having the discipline to stop swinging as hard as you can and start building sound mechanics to hit hard line drives. One of the key reasons behind Mike's ability to hit the ball out of the park is his high bat speed, 99 miles per hour. Let's look at his hitting mechanics. He does an incredible job of moving his body in a sequence that allows him to use his big muscles to take his small muscles to the ball. There are many steps in the baseball swing, but we're going to focus on just the first few in the sequence that set him up for speed. Once he is in his batting stance, the first move is his load. It starts with a gathering of his hips on his backside and he coils a bit inward. Notice how his weight goes up against his back foot, but not over. Once loaded, Mike begins his second move, the stride forward. During his stride, he leads with the lower half of his body. He keeps his hands back to create separation between his hands and his front shoulder and hip. Third, he uncoils with his front hip when he plants his foot, or what we call the foot strike. This helps him hold and store his weight to be ready to explode to the ball. Fourth, he starts his swing with his back knee and elbow and gets his hands into his connection point. His upper body and lower body begin to work in sync. Most of the speed and power is coming from his legs and upper torso, allowing his arms and hands to focus on controlling the bat and getting the barrel to the ball. Now, it's one thing to look at Mike's swing and see what he's doing, but as a hitter, you have to feel how to do these movements the right way in your own swing and then build on it. Practice the right moves and they will become natural. A great drill to help teach your body to get into sequence and produce high bat speed is the step back drill in the training center. The best way to maximize this drill is to use your ZEP sensor while recording your swing video in ZEP. ZEP will automatically record your swing video if your sensor is connected. Do the step back drill and compare your swing video to Mike's home run swing video in the face on view. If you want a clear breakdown of these mechanics when you compare your swing videos, you can use the home run face on mechanics video to compare these points in Mike Trout's swing step by step with your swing. It's okay if your swing style does not look like his, but you do want to see that you're doing the same basic mechanics he is in the same sequence. Use your ZEP sensor to check your bat speed at impact as you do the step back drill. Do this drill over and over. You should see that it helps you generate bat speeds at the upper range of your level. Once you have sound mechanics to start your swing and it comes naturally, you can now think about how your bat barrel should attack the ball. Mike gave us the secret earlier. When I'm going good, I'm just feeling where the barrel is going to the baseball. He's talking about the attack angle of his bat, meaning the path of his barrel as it approaches the ball. It's simple. The baseball pitch comes down on negative angle. In order to match the incoming pitch, the hitter's attack angle has to be positive. By matching the angle of his bat early, Mike can stay on the incoming pitch for a long period of time, giving it a big zone for success. You can work on building a big zone in Zep's video feature by recording your swing from the face-on view. 
As the pitch comes in, use the drawing tool to draw a line to match the trajectory of the ball going into the catcher's glove. Look to see how long your bat barrel is on plane with the ball going into contact. If you have a ZEP sensor, you can measure your attack angle on every swing. The attack angle you want will depend on the incoming pitch, but in general, to create a big zone to hit line drives, a good attack angle should always be in the range of positive 5 to positive 20. For great line drives, positive 8 to 12 is best. To hit the ball in the air and possibly out of the park, your attack angle should be in the positive range of 20 to 25. But be careful of going higher. You don't want to swing up too much on the ball. If you do, you'll swing out of the hitting zone way too early and be the player who has a few too many whiffs. To improve and get a better feeling for your attack angle, go to the ZEP Training Center and try the Fungo Drill. Start with the ground ball you chop down on. You will most often see a negative attack angle. Then try to hit a line drive. Now let's try to go deep. Let's focus on what we learned from Mike Trout's swing. Work from the ground up to produce high bat speed. Focus on getting behind the ball early and trying to get a higher attack angle. If you make contact a little further in front of your stride foot, you should see the ball take off. There's a lot to learn from seeing the home run swing of an MVP player like Mike Trout, but this is a great start. Get the right mental approach. Work hard on building the right mechanics. Then, learn how to give yourself a big hitting zone to attack the ball. My hitting style, if I had to describe it, would be uh, you know inside out swing. Uh, I try to hit the ball to right center every time. In high school, I was straight pool. My high school coaches came up to me and said, hey, you know, mixing something in the right field. And you know, I just always try to work on it. When I was a kid, I didn't have any of this stuff. And if I had it, you know, it definitely put me a step above a lot of, a lot of players. It makes you stay on balls longer, keeps your mechanics all in line. I get up to the box, use your hands, and uh, good things will happen. So what exactly is an inside out swing and how can it help you? Let's analyze Mike Trout's hitting mechanics and find out. The key to an inside out swing is being able to keep your barrel inside your hands until your hands reach the hitting zone. This gives you more bat control in the zone and also puts your bat in a good position to hit hard line drives to all fields. As Mike starts his swing, his barrel is inside. They're to the left of his hands. Notice how his bat barrel stays inside as his hands enter the zone, right about here. At this moment, his hands, elbow, and back hip are all connected and in line, which means he's swinging in sequence. You can also clearly see this when viewing Mike's swing in 3D using the ZEP app. His barrel stays inside during the early part of his swing. After staying inside during the first part of his swing, now it's time for Mike to accelerate his barrel into the ball. ZEP's vertical angle at impact, which measures the vertical angle of your bat when you hit the ball, is a great indicator to see if you're doing an effective inside-out swing. We measured Mike's vertical bat angle at negative 25 degrees at impact, with his hands slightly above his bat barrel. What makes Mike's swing extra special is that it gets to that negative 25 degree vertical angle before impact and maintains that bat angle through impact. Staying inside ultimately helps Mike get his bat on plane with the incoming pitch, meet the ball with good force, and extend through the ball on that same plane. If you're working on staying inside the ball and hitting to right center with your ZEP sensor, try to stay between negative 20 and negative 30 degrees on your vertical angle at impact. All right, now it's your turn. Take a few swings with your ZEP sensor and look at your bat vertical angle at impact to see if you're in the negative 20 to negative 30 range. If you don't have a ZEP sensor, just use the ZEP app to record a video of your swing and compare it to Mike's side by side. Check out the training center in ZEP and try the inside T drill. Do the drill and take at least 10 swings with your ZEP sensor. Look at your vertical angle after every swing to make sure you're staying between negative 20 and negative 30 degrees. Then check out your swing in 3D to make sure you're staying inside. Over time, you'll get a feel for how to stay inside on every swing, just like Mike Trout does.